Guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you here. If you want to be a data scientist, there's really no other way around it. You have got to learn these five skills that I'm going to cover in this video. Now, one by one, I'm going to walk through each of these skills, what you need to learn and why you need to learn it. Lots of optimizations so that you're not wasting your time and learning it efficiently, as well as provide my best free resource on how I would learn this material if I was to do it again today. So without further ado, let's get started with number one, which is SQL. Whether your specialty is in natural language processing, computer vision, or whatever it may be, as a data scientist, you need data, and therefore you need to use SQL, which is the programming language of choice by most data scientists to grab your data and manipulate it in the format you need. The majority of company databases today still use the relational design, which is SQL Server, Oracle, and so on, that support this SQL syntax. And that's why that even the Python data science libraries like Pandas and PySpark still share either the exact same SQL syntax or the same ideas in there like joins and filter operations, so you really need to have SQL drilled in your head. Therefore, it is extremely common to be asked an SQL-like question in the data science interview, and you've got to be able to pass that. Now, I should bring up this idea of no SQL databases, which you guessed it, you won't be writing SQL. Yeah, that's a thing, and stuff like MongoDB is doing that and doing quite well, except we don't have to worry too much about that data scientist. Of course, if you want to learn that and pad your resume, absolutely go for it. It's a great skill, except SQL, the pure uh, diversity and amount of people and systems that are trained in this, it's just not going anywhere for such a long time. So don't worry about that being a factor in the decision here. You need to learn SQL. And I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret here. As a data scientist, your job is to stay modern all the time. I'm trying to stay modern every single day. I need to be on the job. So if this is a hurdle that you need to climb over of MongoDB, it's going to be a much smaller hurdle than some of the ones you've already jumped over before. Now, before I tell you how I'd learn SQL, right now, I will remind you that everything is linked down below. All resources are free and you can access them with no restriction. But if you want to pay for the Coursera specialization certificate, that may be something that's worthwhile doing to show on your resume because you are trying to actually show that you know these concepts. It may be useful to do that, but all of the material is free 100%. So the material that I would recommend is my 30 minute video on the introduction of SQL, as well as this specialization on Coursera, the SQL for data science specialization by the University of California is a really good one. There's also the Postgre SQL specialization by the University of Michigan, if you think that that's the flavor that you would like to learn. Moving on to number two here, another essential skill, which I'm wearing right now, is the watermelon framework. You gotta know that. No, I'm just kidding. You need to know the Python programming language, okay? I'm really suggesting that you learn Python here, not only because I love it so much that I have a hat on Python, but because it is pretty much the industry standard for data scientists, so any machine learning and deep learning work, it's pretty much all gonna be done for the foreseeable future in Python. Pretty much every company has either moved to Python or is in the process of moving it, all of this work to Python. And it's not like you can just kind of choose what programming language that you want. Uh, maybe you like R and you want to be using it on the job. Maybe some companies will be happy with that. Uh, some, some companies will use R for sure. Some companies will be okay with using R, but the majority of them are going to be using Python and they probably expect that you kind of transfer over to that standard as well. So I would become a great programmer and we'll talk about what that means to be a great programmer in Python. Now you may have heard that data scientists don't need to be crazy good programmers. And I find this a really tricky topic because I really don't like when people just say that outright, like data scientists don't need to be amazing coders. I really think that you should be a great developer. Although it may be true that you're not gonna be writing as sophisticated software engineering principles and object oriented design than other software engineers maybe on your team or other uh, parts of the company will be writing. So what I can say for sure on this matter is that any extra Python and software engineering skills you can pick up will greatly benefit you because A, interviews like Microsoft and even smaller companies may ask these types of lead code questions or algorithms, data structures questions, as well as just any sort of software coding, uh, including on your job or not on your job, it'll be a lot better if you can pick these skills up. Now, if you are looking to learn Python, I'd recommend my basics playlist. You could go through that as well as the Python for everybody specialization from the U University of Michigan is very well known. And then after that, you'd also want to learn classes and inheritance, which is a course that I'll link down below as well. And then finally, this is not Python, but just algorithms in particular, the algorithm specialization from Stanford would really help you out for getting those more difficult jobs and just for improving programming skills. 
Also, there is leak code and hacker rank in those types of platforms for improving your algorithms and actually implementing them in Python or other programming languages as well, which would be very helpful for you. Okay, moving on to number three, which is actually just an extension on number two, which what, sounds kind of funny. Number three is Python's core data science libraries, often referred to as the NumPy or SciPy stack, and then TensorFlow and PyTorch, whichever one you prefer. So this aforementioned NumPy slash SciPy stack, sometimes even called the Pandas stack, because it has pandas in there too, refers to all of these libraries that use NumPy and SciPy underneath. So what you really need to know is NumPy, don't worry too much about SciPy, Pandas, PySpark for dealing with uh, tabular data, rows and columns, as well as scikit-learn is your base fundamental machine learning core library there. Now, when I say you need to know these libraries, it doesn't really mean that you need to have memorized all of their syntax. That's not really a great use of your time. What you do need to know is what they're useful for and when you would actually uh, use them if you wanted to. Get good at the ones that you want because, you know, Pandas and PySpark, there's a lot of overlap there. There's a lot of choice. Also, these graphing libraries I didn't mention, like Matplotlib and Plotly and Seaborn. Really, you just want to pick one and get good at one, as well as just the core fundamental techniques like NumPy, indexing arrays, what pandas is good for, like manipulating rows and columns data, you want to be good at those ideas, but you don't need to memorize all the syntax. So to learn these libraries, I strongly recommend the playlist that I have that goes over 15 to 20 minute tutorials of each of those libraries that gets you up and running with those main ideas that I just said you need to know, and then you'll be equipped for this other playlist, my main Python data science projects, that all use those ideas and I explain them, you know, I, I mostly explain it, but then it would help if you already knew what was going on a bit, so I would do the introduction for all of those libraries for sure. And for TensorFlow slash PyTorch, these deep learning libraries, I would just wait one second for those I'm going to talk about soon. And by the way, if you're stuck between picking one, just pick TensorFlow and Keras, it's more common. Now for number four here, it's really hard not to talk about these big terminologies that you may not have heard of, so I apologize for that. If you don't understand everything here, that's totally okay. Basically, I'm going to talk about number four is the idea of training models. So everything about why we would train models, how we might go about doing that, uh, and a little bit about the statistics of how we can do that well, how we can do that at all, and what it even means to actually do that mathematically. So it's a very important topic. Some of the more complicated terminologies are underfitting slash overfitting slash bias and variance. They really mean the same thing, as well as train test validation sets, which are a way to measure that, error functions, and so many more concepts that you really, really need to understand the idea because these are what gets asked super, super common in interviews is pretty much any of those terms I just asked before, you've got to be able to explain them well. So to learn this stuff, I'd highly recommend any of the videos down below that I talked about for those unique ideas and pretty much any of my Python data science projects, I'll be talking about those in though know, it's more of a global scope and we'll talk about those ideas in that part of the video whenever it is, but you may want that more global view as well. So I'd shout that out as well as another favorite YouTuber of mine, Josh Starmer with StatQuest has some really good ideas. And finally, and where I learned it first is from the Andrew Ng machine learning course, which I'll talk a lot about, but not quite yet. I'll get to that very shortly. Okay, so last number five is what you probably expected, but extremely important is all of the machine learning and deep learning algorithms. So anything simple from like logistic regression or linear regression, all the way up until the more complicated deep learning algorithms like recurrent and convolutional neural networks and uh, general adversarial networks is very, very useful. I would recommend learning as much of that content as you possibly can. So to do that, I have lots of videos. I'll link all material down below that I have, as well as my projects that go over in uh, a bigger detail and how to use all of those and apply them in real life, as well as most importantly, the machine learning and deep learning specializations from Andrew Ng. And if you were to get any of the special uh, like certifications and pay for those to show on your LinkedIn, these are the ones to get because employers love them. And the content is just so good. It talks uh, for number four there, it teaches all of that statistical learning stuff. And uh, as well as number five, all the machine learning and deep learning uh, fundamentals, those two courses or specializations teach all of that stuff. So I'd highly recommend watching that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you got some great value out of it. If you did, please drop a like because it helps so, 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 so much. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And finally, if you are not subscribed with notifications on, I've got some really good content I'm coming up for you. I, I do not want to spoil it for you, but it's coming up. So please make sure you subscribe to notifications on so you see that. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time, guys.